Okay, everyone, welcome back from our first break. Um, <clears throat> I was hanging out on the hallway track. We, looks like, I think we still had a couple of different discussions. Um, the last one I was in was talking about uh, scheduling on Alder Lake and dealing with kind of asymmetric cores and so forth. So I imagine we will have more discussions in the future. One suggestion that I think came up, um, if you're going to, if you wanted to talk about something in the hallway track, uh, one suggestion I would make is go find a table and then create a little text box describing the topic you're going to talk about. It'll make it easier for people to figure out if they want to come over to your table or not without having to just kind of grab themselves and wander around listening in on everything. Um, and there's a, if you click plus, you can see when you're in the interface for the hallway track on spatial, if you click plus, you can see a list of tools and you can do a text box that way. Um, and please no more Rick Rolls. Um, aside from that, our next talk is going to be from Brooks, giving an update on Cherry, which is something I've near and dear to my heart as well. But I'm going to turn it over to Brooks. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm here today to talk to you about Cherry, what it is, um, what ARMS Morello um, CPU it is all about, and their prototype uh, implementing Cherry. And then uh, talk a bit about the implications for FreeBSD. Um, we've been using FreeBSD uh, for Cherry development uh, through, throughout the entire project. And right now, FreeBSD has a potential lead um, in terms of Cherry adoption and that we are the only really full featured platform uh, with Cherry support. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So what is Cherry? Cherry is, nominally uh, capability hardware extended risk instructions. Um, it's a new hardware technology that mitigates security vulnerabilities. And uh, Cambridge SRI and a bunch of uh, collaborators have been working on it uh, for over a decade now. Uh, we started collaborating with ARM um, in 2014. And then in 2019, it actually became public um, that, that we had been doing this. And the ARM Morello platform was announced with support from uh, the UK government's UK, uh, UKRI, UK Research Institute in Initiative, I believe. Um, so in today's talk, I'm gonna talk about why we developed Cherry, what Cherry is and how does it work, um, the sort of software you can run on it, what sort of, a, I'll talk a bit about some security evaluations that have been uh, done on Cherry, and then talk a bit about uh, Cherry and FreeBSD and uh, try to spark some discussion on how to move forward. So why develop Cherry? Well, we've had buffer overflows forever. Um, and as this quote here uh, at the top says, we've, you know, we haven't done, it, we've basically done nothing to improve the situation in the last 40 years. We have neat tools like address sanitizer and, their, and its predecessors. Um, we have static analysis. And yet fundamentally, buffer overflows are still everywhere. Um, and if anything, their impact is worse than before um, in our increasingly connected world. Um, in, a, in a talk by uh, Matt Miller uh, at the Microsoft Security Response Center um, a, a few years ago, he said that 70% of their vulnerabilities that require patches are uh, memory safety bugs. And spatial memory safety is the first, the first of those, um, followed by use after free bugs. So that's really bad. Um, and we really haven't made much progress. We've had a number of, we have a number of neat diagnostic tools, but most of them can't be run at, uh, at can't be used at runtime or in deployment. So they're not, we, we don't actually solve the problem. You know, if we catch, if the developers catch the bug, great, but if they don't, it's out there and it, it impacts people. So Here's, a, here's an example of things that go wrong. You probably all remember Heartbleed. Um, you know, one of the first vulnerabilities with a logo um, is, now it, is, is now required. Um, and you know, the, the way it worked is there was a, a heartbeat message um, where a client would send to the server, you know, hey, are you still there? Send me potato, it's six letters, um, or something like that. Or you know, send me bird, it's four letters. But then, what if you sent, um, you know, send me hat, it's 500 letters. Well, the server would send you hat and then whatever was laying around in a buffer. Um, and in this case here, 
Um, if you look very closely, it is, you know, some stuff in the buffer and please change the user's password um, to this. So, you know, that, that seems like something you don't want to happen. Well, what went wrong here and how can we do better? The classical answer to what went wrong is that the programmer made an error and they should make the one line bug fix. And this is all well and good, but we know this isn't working. Our answer with Cherry is to preserve the bounds information of the program during compilation and project it all the way down to the hardware where we can use Cherry to detect that there was an overrun and um, an abort rather than leaking information. So here's another example. So this is a, another sort of, of a general problem. So software attack surface just keeps getting bigger. This is because applications are larger, large in many cases because they're more complicated, but also because they're using huge libraries to aid rapid development. They're using multiple programming languages because one is better suited to part of the part of the job than another. And then of course, everything's networked. And in fact, you know, your browser is, is a distributed system. Um, so, you know, everything is just super complicated. Um, this aids the attacker. It gives them a whole new error number of ways to break in and a whole, whole set of things to exploit. Um, you know, you, you have, have things like when you have a Java virtual machine, or not a, well, not a JVM anymore, but sorry, a JavaScript virtual machine, um, that allows you to write code to attack the software um, and, for instance, break things like address-based layout randomization. So the Cherry solution is to implement least privilege at the application level. We do this um, using software compartmentalization. Now, software compartmentalization is an old idea. It's been around for a long time. You know, you see examples like the PrivSep code in um, the, the, the PrivSep code in OpenSSH, or the fact that in modern Chrome and Firefox, all your tabs run in separate processes. So at least getting from one to another is quite challenging. Um, but with Cherry, we can make a lot more compartments. So we, we, uh, that, that gives us a big benefit in terms of being able to isolate potentially buggy code. Uh, we believe we can create a couple orders of magnitude more, more compartments potentially. Um, and one neat thing about compartmentalization is that not only can it, can it uh, mitigate vulnerabilities you don't know about, it can mitigate entire classes of vulnerabilities you don't know about. It's one of the only techniques that we know of that has this sort of potential. Um, let's see, I got a couple of questions here. Um, so the first question is, um, would bounds checking language is like Ada or Rust help here? The answer is yes. But in many cases, um, but in, well, in many cases, we have existing software. We have over 20 billion lines of open source C and C++ code in the world. Um, we're not going to rewrite it all immediately. So there's a, there's a huge time lag in terms of being able to fix problems that way. Um, secondly, things like Rust have unsafe mode. Um, so, or are they, to, to be able to implement things that the language can't express, like linked lists, or um, they have a foreign function interface. So turns out there's some bits you don't want to implement and there's a C implementation, so you use it. Um, it'd be nice if we could make those safe. Um, there's a second question here. Um, can Cherry capabilities replace the paging MMU? And the answer is yes, potentially, um, but existing software won't work well. It is, is unlikely to just move to that environment with no work. Um, something where we have done in uh, some embedded operating systems. And I'll talk a little bit more about some work where we're doing a sort of a lightweight version of that for uh, compartmentalization. So Cherry upholds a couple uh, principles. First, the principle of intentional use. The idea here is that you convey, that the, that the software developer conveys their, their intention to the, to the language and that intention is carried on down. And when you do something, when you take some action, you do it with, um, with the object that you meant to work on, not with just an address somewhere um, that you made up, uh, for instance. And the second is the principle of least privilege. So this both 
um, happens writ small with bounds on uh, buffers and also writ large, uh, writ larger with software compartmentalization. So software compartmentalization can reduce attack surfaces, mitigate exploits, and we have extremely scalable um, and efficient compartmentalization with Cherry. Now, let me talk a bit about what Cherry actually does. Um, Cherry adds a new hardware type, the capability. A Cherry capability is a bounds checked pointer with integrity properties. It's held in memory and in extended registers. Um, it takes the address and it adds uh, permissions and compressed bounds, as well as um, a sealed bit, uh, which, makes, which can make the uh, capability unmanipulatable. And then that takes up 128 bits. And then we add a single, an additional bit off to the side, um, which indicates validity or integrity. Um, this tag is a key, is key because it means that if you manipulate, if you try to manipulate the capability bits without using a capability aware instruction, the tag will be cleared and it will be destroyed. Likewise, if you perform an invalid manipulation, um, for instance, you try to increase the bounds, the tag will be lost. So here's a, here's a little example of the capability pointing um, into a range of memory. Um, so capabilities here can be used to replace pointers. Um, so talk a little bit about how the primitives are uh, put together to, uh, 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 to, to make this all work. Um, I see I have a question here is where is the, where is the integrity tag stored? Uh, there's two answers to this question, depending on your implementation. Um, one, in one model, you simply store it next to the, uh, you store it right next to the um, capability in memory and the memory controller hides it from you. The other option is that you store it in a separate set of memory, all, like also the memory controller hides it, hides it or uh, prevents access to it. And then there's a tag cache in that case um, to avoid extra DRAM traffic. So in terms of the processor uh, primitives, um, so first of all, Cherry is an architectural, Cherry capabilities are an architectural primitive. And they're used by software, by compilers, by software and applications to constrain the future um, execution of a process. Um, that's implemented with a microarchitecture. The, the microarchitecture um, ensures that the data types are correct, that the tag and the tag memory, um, the tag is maintained, and it enforces various manipulation properties. And then the software refines capabilities um, to have meaning relative to the programming language. So, and to express the programmer's meaning, uh, the programmer's intent. So there's basically two applications of these primitives that I've kind of talked about before, but I'll talk about again, because it's important. Um, so there's, there's efficient fine-grained memory protection for languages like C and C++. There's also this, we provide strong source level compatibility with recompilation, but recompilation is required to get any benefit. Um, our protections are deterministic. They don't depend on, um, on entropy, so they don't detect, they don't depend on on, on random layout or um, a hash value like like uh, the uh, pack pointer integrity uh, codes or pointer authentication codes uh, from ARM. And in, and and so this is a really key thing. We strive for determinism, and we just try, So we believe that will both give us better debugability and better security because we don't have to worry about for instance, speculative execution bypassing, um, bypassing our protections. We don't have to worry about it very much anyway. Um, in, a, in a few rep uh, retrospective studies that I'll talk about a bit more later, um, about two thirds of vulnerabilities can be mitigated by simply applying Cherry um, for, for bounds and overhead's fairly modest. Um, for most real world use cases, we're talking zero to 5%. Um, some extremely pointer dense workloads, benchmarks where um, everything you're doing is basically walking a tree of pointers, um, overheads may be a bit higher. But I don't really, I'm not focusing on uh, performance in this talk. 
Um, there's, we also have scalable software compartmentalization. Um, there's a lot of different models um, that could be applied. Um, and we'll talk a bit about which ones, uh, which, which ones that uh, we're gonna we're gonna deal with we're gonna uh, we're exploring at the moment. Um, the big thing that uh, software compartmentalization does is that it increases the exploit chain length, um, and that uh, and makes it harder for uh, attackers to get from wherever it is they get a toehold down to whatever it is they want to do. Um, and we we believe and early in, early benchmarks show that we can get orders of magnitude improvement over MMU-based uh, compartmentalization, which is to say process-based compartmentalization. Um, I see I have a question about speculative execution. I think I will punt that to the end and we can talk about it uh, uh, either offline or at the end. So here's a quick summary of how the memory protection works. Um, use capabilities to partition your memory, um, your, your address space. So uh, capabilities, integrity and providence properties um, ensure that you can't make one out of nothing. Um, you have to derive one from another. Bounds mean that if you have one allocation, you can't use it to get to another unrelated allocation. And monotonicity means that you can't go from an allocation, uh, from a sub-allocation to the larger piece um, that it came from. Next, that was, that was talking about data. Now here's code. The same properties um, apply to code to code pointers, um, and, per, and the permissions ensure that you can't turn a data capability into a code capability. Um, and uh, so, so it's, yeah. So, so the, the key thing here is that software reduces pointer permissions um, during execution. And this is all, all of this put together is the foundation for higher level things such as uh, software compartmentalization. So compartmentalization scalability. We dramatically improve scalability because we don't have to go through the kernel and swap your whole um, page table or you know, exchange your page tables and, and, and whatnot. We don't have to blow your uh, TLB uh, cache and, and that sort of thing. So we can allow more compartments. Um, we think one or two orders of magnitude more. We can allow faster and more frequent domain transitions between compartments. Um, because all we're doing is transforming the register set um, and faster shared memory because we can share the same address space um, and both look into the same buffer. There are all sorts of complications about memory ownership, but, that is, but we can still nonetheless do that. Now, there's a lot of potential use cases. An obvious one is that we'd like to sandbox every piece of multimedia stuff in a, in a web browser. Um, Firefox has done a bit of this with its RL box work um, but uh, we can be, we can run native code rather than being forced to use WebAssembly, um, which also has the problem that it has no, no bounds internally. Um, and then on, it is worth pointing out though that while compartmentalization is a huge benefit for Cherry, unlike memory protection, software compartmentalization does require refactoring your, of your code. Um, the memory protection requires a few changes generally quite modest. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about one study of that uh, later. But compartmentalization actually requires you, that you change the coupling of your software. So that's, that's a definite uh, issue. So now I'm gonna talk about the prototype stack that we have for Cherry and Morello. Um, this, is, this is both software that we've developed at uh, Cambridge and SRI um, and also uh, software that ARM has de developed in-house in or uh, with help from Linaro. So we have a, we have a complete stack um, all the way from bare metal up. We have compilers, tool chains, debuggers, hypervisors, um, OSs, and applications. So at the, the core, we have, we have a, the tool chain bits. Um, the, the Cherry project uh, built the LLVM, LLVM and Clang work and uh, John, John Baldwin did the GDB. We supported MIPS initially, although we've now deprecated that support. Now we support RISC-V. ARM took that and built on top of it uh, to build Morello support. On top of that, um, we have a whole software stack of CherryBSD um, ported to RISC-V and Morello. This is 
Cherry, this is FreeBSD adapted to Cherry. I'll talk a bit more about it on the next slide. And then we have an op, we have a, an application stack. So we have a, a slice of X11 and KDE working. Um, we have WebKit, um, which is the basis um, one way or another for most modern web browsers. Um, we have, and we have a bunch of basic software like Python, OpenSSH, Nginx, Postgres uh, working. So Cherry BSD, it's, you know, as I say, it's free BSD adapted to Cherry. Um, from a user perspective, the big thing, the big changes are we have a new ABI, Cherry ABI, um, where all pointers are Cherry capabilities. And this includes, um, so, and this includes the pointers used to make system calls. And in fact, the kernel only accesses user space memory through capabilities. Um, you can uh, learn a bit more about that if you go and listen to my BSD CAN talk, or if you already have, um, or I should be giving it at uh, EuroBSD CAN uh, in September. Um, it's also a new compatibility ABI. Um, this is FreeBSD 64. It supports conventional um, RISC-V 64 and ARCH 64 uh, binaries, as well as hybrid ones where some pointers are capabilities. You can think of it as an analog to FreeBSD 32. Um, it works basically the same way. And I've made a lot of improvements to FreeBSD 32 um, as a result of doing the FreeBSD 64 work in CherryBSD. Um, our kernel can be either a hybrid program um, where only some pointers are capabilities, or it can be a peer capability program where all pointers are capabilities. Um, we started out with hybrid. Um, in large part because we didn't really have adequate compiler support when we started out. Um, and, uh, and we've since uh, done peer capability support um, with, uh, with help of a grad student, uh, Alfredo, who is really, uh, who's done not only peer capability support, but uh, supported sub-object bounds, which is to say putting the bounds on uh, things like an array within a structure um, for extra protection. We have uh, Panfrost GPU support. Um, uh, Rosalind has it working on his desk, and this is all peer capability. So all pointers are capabilities, um, uh, both in the kernel and in user space. We have OpenGL up and running. Uh, we now need to get it landed into our main tree. Um, and similarly, Andy's uh, work on Beehive for ARM64, um, he's built on top of that uh, to add Morello support. Um, so that we can add, so that we can run Cherry BSD uh, in a VM, and that's the motivation for the uh, uh, OpenStack work that uh, uh, was talked about earlier. Where uh, so we we have about thirty uh, Morello boxes that are going to be put in a data center in Cambridge, and we hope to be able to hand out VMs to interested developers in the not too distant future. So now I'm going to talk a bit about a couple security analyses. Of Cherry. First, there's a one that's a couple of years old from the Microsoft Security Response Center. Um, they looked at critical memory safety vulnerabilities um, with the metric, does it pose a risk to customers and thus require a software update? They consider mitigated vulnerabilities that crash not to require a software update. They can be fixed later um, as part of a normal upgrade process um, rather than you know, as a patch Tuesday sort of thing. So they wanted to know. Basically, how many patch Tuesdays can we avoid? Um, so they have a blog post and a long report looking at uh, uh, analyzing vulnerabilities for spatial safety. Um, and they did a bit of a sort of paper and pencil analysis of temporal safety work um, because the baseline they were using didn't have that. And then they also red teamed some specific bits of cherry, um, found a few bugs for us, quite helpful. Um, and they said Cherry, the, the, the bottom line though is that Cherry in, it, in its current state would deterministically mitigate about two thirds of the issues that they had to patch. So uh, we find that very promising. Um, another study was performed by Capabilities Limited. This is uh, Robert Watson and Ben Laurie's uh, consultancy. Um, and they looked at building an open source desktop for Morello. They did this on QEMU because that's what was available at the time. They selected a slice of applications, um, X11, QT, and KDE and a few, uh, a few applications. They implemented um, referential and spatial safety. And then they also whiteboarded some compartmentalization um, to see where you, where you could get a bit farther if you did a little bit of compartmentalization. Um, 
They also evaluated the lines of code change, which I think a lot of people will be interested in, um, and then did a retrospective and a vulnerability analysis, much like the Microsoft one, although they just considered any vulnerability that was published. And there's a, there's a report online. Um, the key outcomes, they looked at 6 million lines of code and compiled it, um, and they did three case studies on compartmentalization. The lines of code modification changes are fantastic. We're looking at less than 0.03% uh, lines of code had to be changed. And in, a, in fact, many of these changes were changes to add cross-building support um, or to fix broken cross-building support, not actual changes to the C code, um, which, was, which is really, really nice. Um, and again, they got about, they got 73% or so uh, mitigation rate using a combination of memory safety and hypothetical compartmentalization. Um, so that's, that's quite promising in terms of reducing the number of advisories and uh, hopefully with compartmentalization, improving availability. Um, one of the things that they noted doing the uh, retrospective study um, was that a lot of security advisories or security patches were for denial of service in uh, user applications, uh, which is a bit of a different model than Microsoft, um, than the, the Microsoft vulnerabilities. And so that, that, that uh, implies a, a strong interest in allowing things to stay up and compartmentalization can help with availability. So where to learn more? Well, we have our, our project page, cherrycpe.org. We also have um, cherrybsd.org, where in fact our latest release is available. Um, and there's links to documentation. We have an introduction to Cherry. We now have a, not, not listed here, but a, a new uh, CherryBSD getting started guide. Um, the most recent published version of our ISA spec is available. Um, and we have a C and C++ programming guide. Um, for people to, under, to, to start to learn how to program uh, to Cherry and how to modify their programs. So I'm gonna use a couple of slides from ARM uh, to talk about the Morello program. This is part of the Digital Security by Design um, initiative in the UK. And ARM is interested in making fundamental breakthroughs in security. So they, that's what got them interested in Morello um, or in, in Cherry. Um, and led to this Morello program. The, the basic issue is that we keep, you know, bandaging things and the bandages work for a while and then the packers figure out how to get around them and it, we keep doing this. Um, and we don't, we often don't have an appetite for big hardware changes. Um, so we get things that are, that can be done cheaply and are low commitment. Um, and then we find out if they work. For something like Cherry, it's a bigger deal. And so we're trying to, to break, the, break the deadlock between the hardware and the software people, where the software people are not gonna put work into um, building, building software or modifying software for a new environment if they don't know that it will be built. And the hardware people don't want to build hardware that the software people won't, won't use because that's expensive. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's going on. So, Here's a slide basically just showing there's a lot of ARM processors, um, really, truly ridiculous numbers. Um, I think it's, I think the 25 billion uh, chips shipped in 2022, um, that's, that comes out to like hundreds a second. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. So they want to, they want to change all of these processors and make them all better. So Morello is, um, so Morello is, is the cool bit. We've, got, we've now got this implementation of Cherry. It runs at a reasonable clock rate. Um, you can build world on it in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I've got one on my desk right next to me right now um, that just arrived last week. It's super exciting. Um, the, so, so that's, now we can actually really test Cherry at scale and do a lot more work there. So what is ARM? hope to achieve with this program? Well, they're hoping um, to reduce the number of, of security vulnerabilities tremendously. Um, they, they know they have a bunch of partners who are interested in Cherry, um, but at the end of the day, they need somebody who to commit, who can, solve, who can you know, sell hundreds of millions of processors a year, or better yet, billions. Um, so they need a customer. And Morello is, 
is a prototype to help get feedback on the architecture and figure out if customers are willing to say yes. Um, the, what, what, what does success look like here? Well, it's people find Morello compelling. They find that it addresses security challenges and that they believe they can deploy it. Um, and the hope is that this leads to cherry technologies in ARM processors and also other processors. Um, ARM, we, our, our work with ARM is under an agreement where we're, we, we are careful to ensure that none of the critical bits of Cherry, uh, the, what, we, what we call the capability essential IP, um, will be patented in such a way that somebody else can't build it. So that means that a RISC-V standard could happen. And it's really important to us and to ARM because we know that if, you know, that our ARM knows that if they have a weird processor um, with weird extensions that requires a different compiler, that's not necessarily going to fly. But if there's multiple players, um, then it can all work and they can all share the load. Um, so let's see. So here's a timeline of the Cherry project. Um, this chart is getting increasingly crowded and we need to make it slightly taller again, I think, um, so that we have any hope of reading it. Uh, we've been at it for uh, over 20 years now, or sorry, over 10 years now. And in fact, over 150 researcher hours um, have been put into it. So it's, it's a really big project. Um, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about FreeBSD things. So we have been up, upstreaming things um, We've been upstreaming changes uh, to free, from CherryBSD to FreeBSD um, wherever practical, wherever it makes sense. Um, so we do we upstream any sort of obvious improvements to the baseline um, because we don't want to maintain those diffs, and we also um, and and sometimes we update upstream refactorings that are you know maybe neutral but help us. So we've been trying to do that. Um, there is a question though um, now that we have real hardware, although not for a production ISA, at what point should we upstream Cherry? Um, I think it would be really helpful in terms of showing, showing a community commitment to Cherry. Um, and it would, allow, it would allow CI to cover Cherry specific issues. Um, although we don't actually see a lot of problem, a lot of cases where FreeBSD developers make changes that, that break Cherry code. So that is actually quite, not quite good and quite promising. Um, but nonetheless, it would be nice to have things in CI. Um, the downside is right now there is no non-prototype architecture. So we've got Morello. Um, Morello. Morello is in an encoding space that can't probably can't be used for production. Um, and then ARM will have, so it'll, it'll definitely be re-encoded if it becomes a real thing. Um, and likewise, RISC-V, I think our encoding space has already been stomped on. Um, and we would need something standardized upstream before we could consider doing anything. I'm also ports. So we're actually recently started a fork of ports um, to develop ports for, uh, for Cherry BSD. So we build hybrid, we do both hybrid packages, which is to say conventional ARC64 packages and, um, and uh, and, and Cherry ABI packages. So with the hybrid packages, um, we're installing them in an, alternate, in an alternate location and we have wrappers to package so that you can install, install both into both, uh, you install both types of things because there would be conflicts that we decided the easiest path was to have a package 64 and a package 64 C um, where, the, where the latter is the capability one um, and to use a different local base, a different directory and var, et cetera. Um, we are seeing a, quite a bit of breakage um, due to local base being in the wrong place. So we're building, I think, about 23,000 packages at the moment out of 30 something. Um, so there's, there's a number of things broken or blocked. Um, what we would like feedback on is what sort of changes would be acceptable upstream. I, th I think local base, not equal user local, presumably. Um, I've also, one I ran into yesterday was that um, we sometimes have excess dependencies when you disable docs. Um, so we depend on, on, on the doc bits um, always. There's probably other things that are sort of general. So I'd like to get feedback uh, on that. 
And then I'd like to talk a bit about implications of Cherry and CherryBSD to the FreeBSD project. Right now, CherryBSD is the only practical development environment for Cherry software. Um, ARM has Android and Linux ports, but they're not like a full production system. They're, you know, they're a kernel here and a and muscle there and, and various bits. Um, and they don't have a real pure capability runtime yet uh, and that sort of thing. Um, that was, that is made possible by FreeBSD's integrated base system. And it turns out our use of Clang was really critical. Um, and ports has actually been really helpful. So we've been able to build about 8,000 Cherry ABI packages. Maybe we're to 9,000 now. Um, I forgot to check this morning. Um, so having integration is really helpful for us. And it's really benefited um, our work on Cherry BSD. Um, but the question is, how can FreeBSD, now that we, while we have this lead, can we maintain it? Can we exploit it um, to grow the project? I'd really like to do that. I'd like to see, I'd like us to think about how as a project we can do that. So some conclusions. Um, cherry protections are deterministic and solve fundamental security issues. Um, cherry provides hardware, provides the hardware with what it, with more of the programmer's intent. We don't strip it all away every time we do a memory access by just turning it into an integer. Um, this is helps with the principle of intentionality. Um, we have pointer integrity and bounds checking um, that defeat a lot of conventional exploits. Uh, we basically eliminate buffer overflows. And we provide scalable, efficient compartmentalization. This is a bit of a work in progress, but that is our intent. Um, and this allows least privilege um, to mitigate both known and unknown attacks. FreeBSD is playing a major role here, and I'd really like to see how we can keep it going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll back and start answering some more questions. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, can Cherry be used to implement call gates without system calls? Um, Cherry can be used to do um, domain transition without, without system calls. Um, how would the overhead of a Cherry-only operating system compare to a common MMU approach? Honestly, I have no idea um, because we don't have performant hardware without, um, without MMUs. So it's, a, it's not really an easily answerable question. Um, I think we are interested in, in looking at single address space Unix, um, but uh, we have not gotten there. Uh, let's see. So how, how, would, how would FreeBSD run Cherry regression tests? Is there an emulator? Um, yeah, so we do have a QEMU emulator. Um, we, have, we, we run regression tests, um, including the, the uh, FreeBSD ones in QEMU, running the whole set in QEMU takes quite a while, um, eight hours or something, if I remember right. Uh, let's see, which ports require the most patching? Um, I don't think we've ported enough, enough uh, software. We haven't shoved enough software into ports to really come to a conclusive uh, answer to that question. Um, there's some software we'll probably, we won't port. For instance, we're not gonna port obsolete compilers um, forward, and it looks like John's going to answer this one. And then, um, but uh, yeah, we're, we have some interest in, in sort of, in, we're, well, we want to greatly expand the amount of software ported to Cherry, to, uh, Cherry ABI, and uh, we're, we're working on that. Let's see. Is Cherry used inside the kernel or just user space? Um, so, so the Cherry user space is a pure is a pure capability user space um, by default in, in our in our releases. The kernel can either be a pure capability user space or a hybrid user space. In the hybrid mode, um, Cherry. Let's see. In, in in a hybrid in the hybrid mode, all pointers to user space um, are capabilities. So that's why it is so. Why why our diff is quite large, is that um, in in overall is that we have to annotate every every variable that could be from user space. Um, I think if we were to upstream Cherry BSD, we would almost certainly 
start by upstreaming pure capability only because it's much less disruptive. Um, one of the interesting aspects of having all user space access be via capabilities is that we actually put bounds or potentially put bounds on um, buffers from six, standard 64-bit programs. So, so things in the hybrid ABI. And uh, there are actually some cases where that can mit mitigate exploits like against the kernel um, because we know, because we have the system, syscall boundary manufacture a capability and uh, bound it. Let's see, uh, going back to speculation. Well, so I, I am not, I'm not the author of the work on uh, speculation. Um, we have a paper that hopefully should, well, that is in revision at the moment um, that talks about some work on speculation. Uh, the main thing is that you can, with, with Cherry, you can speculate a bit more than would otherwise be safe because you have bounds. So you can make sure that you, you speculate only on addresses you could reach um, because the information's right there. You don't have to go digging around to find it somewhere. Um, but you do have to be sure that you don't um, speculatively man manufacture a capability that you shouldn't be able to. So there's there's a work there. It is it's a microarchitecture problem basically. Can capabilities replace pointer plus size pairs in some system calls? Um, because of the compressed bounds, no. Because um, for a sufficiently large object. The uh, the the capability will be um, will have to be uh, slightly larger than you than requested. So the the num the size won't be right. Uh, that size on Morello is I think something like sixteen k. Um, that you if you have funny shaped things over sixteen k or so, um, that uh, they will need to become, for instance, word granularity or one big enough page granularity. So allocators need to need to be altered to add padding um, to, to, to handle that, uh, that rounding. So there's one question from Renee still, I think, about um, bounds checking in languages like Ada or Rust and how that interacts with Cherry. Sure, I, to speak I, to that. I think I answered it a bit, but I'll speak to it a little more. Okay. Um, yeah, so in a, in, a, in a language with complete bounds checking and a runtime not written in C, um, you know, the, you might not need Cherry at all. Um, but in but Rust has a number of cases where it, it's forced to fall back to um, where, where, where it's forced to fall back to runtime bounds checking, which is expensive. Um, it also has unsafe mode um, where you can just manufacture capabilities out of where you can you could potentially manufacture pointers out of nowhere. Um, there was a long, 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 long chat thread and several uh, other and and. GitHub issues and all sorts of things recently about adding strict provenance to the language um, to be a step towards making it work with Cherry. Um, so that's a, yeah, so that, that um, the answer is I think something like Rust would benefit. Also, um, we've done some work um, quite a while back with Java, um, where if you look at a Java virtual machine, it has a million lines of C code in it. Um, for one reason or another, whether support bits or 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 whatnot, um, and so we can use Cherry to make this to um, extend Java's protections into the C layer and put bounds on things that the C layer is manipulating. So you can get a stronger uh, environment that way. Um, and I guess a funny, not really Cherry related story. Uh, there was an announcement recently about how um, the the Oracle JVM had a had rewritten some crypto code um, to, and it turns out it didn't verify signatures correctly, um, 
And they'd rewritten it from C to Java. And it turns out because they didn't run the test suite, um, they had completely broken signature verification and made everything worse with the rewrite. So that's a, a risk of a complete rewrite there. Um, and, and a reason why you might want to just use Cherry and protect yourself uh, instead, because our changes are much smaller. Um, so let's see, a question about, uh, is, is the compression of capabilities similar to floating point? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, it's, uh, yeah, there's a, there, there's an exponent. There's a long paper called uh, Cherry Concentrate um, that talks about it in um, probably more detail than anyone would ever want to know who wasn't an implementer. Um, the, uh, I think, I'm not sure if we actually issued a revised one. ARM used it to implement uh, the Morello capabilities and I think found a couple bugs. Let's see, another question. For existing code bases, um, What, what can Cherry offer over, um, over things like PAC um, and simpler additions for fast bound checking? Um, so Cherry provides, well, so Cherry, Cherry provides um, strong integrity of the pointers themselves um, and would, for instance, probably, probably break the existing, the, the recent attacks on PAC um, because you can't just make up you can't just go around make up, making up capabilities. I believe you could if you wanted a little more flow control than we currently have. Um, if you wanted to defeat a gadget that could find, that could farm capabilities and try them, um, or at least make it much harder to build one, um, you could probably combine Cherry with PAC. Um, Morello is based on ARMv8.2, which doesn't have PAC. So, um, it's not something that I think ARM has looked at in any detail. I don't know what their future plans are there. Um, for things like MTEs, bounds checking, um, they are fast, but current implementations um, are delayed or, or only fast if you use them asynchronously. So you have to, uh, you only find out if you've had a bounds violation when you hit the kernel boundary. Um, so that is not practical. That's not that's not believed to be a fundamental limitation of MTE, but it's still a limitation. Um, there's also the problem that with MTE, um, to get um, bounds, the you, you can take an MTE pointer of a particular color and you can write to any memory of that color, whether it's adjacent or not. Um, so there's a statistical aspect there um, rather than being deterministic. Um, we do have some interest in the ways MTE can interact with Cherry um, and potentially help us do temporal safety. Um, looks like we are out of questions. Yep. So thank you very much, Brooks, um, for your talk. I mean, I'm incredibly biased since I work on it too. But, um, thank you again. So I think we're going to go to our next break. Um, if folks want to go on over to the hallway track. If we have more questions for Brooks, you can probably talk to Brooks there um, about more stuff with Cherry. Uh, yeah, sounds, all right. Sounds good. I will go move to I will go move to a platform. <laughs> okay. So we'll be back in about uh, 25 minutes or so now to talk about pre-commit CI, which I think is going to be more of a roundtable discussion led by Warner and Ed. So we'll see you all then.